All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Abhiram. Um, I'm part of Google's AI infrastructure team, uh, specializing in network infrastructure. Uh, today, I'm here with my colleague uh, Jay Kumar Broadcom, uh, and we are here representing an incredible team and collaboration across over a dozen companies that have been redefining what congestion signaling means in this era of AI. The AI era is truly a new era for networking. The demands posed by these workloads is nothing short of extreme. They have set new norms for what congestion means in the network, and they've completely shattered all our core assumptions of statistical multiplexing. With massive synchronized bursts that, uh, across millions of accelerators, uh, congestion events that only last a few microseconds, and predictable repeating patterns of short-lived congestion. Now, to manage this new reality, we rely on a suite of control loops operating at different time scales, to both for efficiency and for providing guarantees. This includes systems from congestion control and load balancing, all the way to traffic engineering, provisioning, and scheduling. Our central observation was that these systems are actually flying blind without one critical element, which is accurate and fine-grained congestion signals. First, we need high-resolution signals to even detect congestion. Let me show you what I mean. Here's an example of a real-world GPU top-of-rack switch running a customer training workload at Google. When we look at the port utilization at the timescale resolution of one second, which is the typical timescale for network monitoring in the industry, the utilization looks pretty stable. It's hovering just above 50% and it all looks very manageable. But this is an illusion, because when you zoom in 10,000 times deeper into a 100 microsecond timescale resolution, a whole new reality emerges. All the bursts and the idle gaps corresponding to compute and communication cycles all reveal themselves. We can even demarcate what a training step look like, looks like, which forms the unit of what repeats itself over and over as training progresses. Now, if our systems are making decisions based on the coarser grain graph at the top, then they are not just suboptimal, but they could be fundamentally wrong. We need our systems and operators to be able to see the behaviors that they need to manage. Here's another example of a real world, this time, TPU job at Google. <coughs> and at the 100 microsecond resolution, similar to the GPU case, we can characterize the network signature of a training step. And during the periods of congestion, we see line rate bursts. And these line rate bursts manifest not just at the top of rack switch, but they also propagate through multiple layers of the topology into the core switches as well. And these periods of congestion, recurring congestion cycles, also use a significant amount of packet buffer on the switch at these fine-grained timescales. Now, observing these behaviors is extremely critical. And at Google, we have, in fact, deployed this high-resolution telemetry at scale. And it's a foundational capability that powers our AI networks today. Now, having this level of visibility at the switch level is very useful. But it's only part of the story. Because from the perspective of an AI workload, what matters is not what's going on in, in any single switch in the network, but rather how it experiences the net network end to end across the fabric. And more specifically, it's the bottleneck or the choke point in terms of capacity or delay that ultimately determines the end to end network performance. Finding this bottleneck is, in fact, the most critical signal for control loops because then they can take targeted, precise action to address these bottlenecks. When we talk about bottlenecks, we, we are referring to extremities of signals across an end-to-end -end path, signals such as minimum available bandwidth or the hop that introduced the maximum delay to a packet. The key question now becomes, how do we compute and report in real time extremities of these signals that constitute path bottlenecks? Our solution is the CSIG protocol, which is designed to do exactly this. It works by embedding a small fixed size tag into the packet header called the CSIG tag, 
and the tag structure allows you to query for both the bottleneck signal and the bottleneck location for a given signal type. The signals themselves are high resolution like we saw earlier, and the protocol gives us a way to stitch that information across an end-to-end -end path to find that bottleneck. The protocol is simple, it's hardware efficient, and it works with any transport. Now, a couple of years ago, here at OCP, we introduced CSIG as a concept. And today, it's a reality at Google. We are the first in the industry to deploy CSIG at scale in our production data center fabrics. And it's been proven in the most demanding real-world conditions in Google's production. We have deployed it in brownfield. We have deployed it over commodity hardware with clever engineering without having to need a full hardware forklift. We have deployed it end-to-end -end across a heterogeneous network of different NICs, switches, software stacks, and transports. And as importantly, we have been able to add these headers to all application data packets without incurring any performance overheads and do so in a hitless way, proving that it's actually possible to add such intelligence into the network without sacrificing line rate performance. We've been open about CSIG from the get-go, and we continue to share our experience with our industry partners to enable an open standard. Now, what does all this buy us? So first, we get unprecedented actionable insights from CSIG. This heat map from a production TPU job instantly shows us which communication pairs across its compute blocks are starved for bandwidth, as shown in red on the left. Even more powerfully, the chart on the right shows us exactly where the bottleneck is occurring for these communication pairs, where each color represents a different tier of the network fabric. Before CSIG, operators had to correlate volumes of disconnected telemetry to try and debug what's going on in the network to flows. Whereas CSIG directly measures this from the application's perspective and can answer questions like the ones listed on the slide. Second, CSIG improves congestion control and load balancing. It enables fast ramp up for congestion controls like Swift, where you can both quickly and safely grab the available bandwidth in proportion to what bandwidth is available on the network. And this yields up to 15% improvement in latency for bursty environments. Load balancing is also a lot smarter with CSIG. Using bottleneck location, we can distinguish between congestion happening at the last op and congestion happening at the core of the network. And this yields up to 2.5x improvement in tail latency. For emerging transports, like the ultra ethernet transport, CSIG provides critical signals to further optimize the advanced sender-driven and receiver-driven schemes and improve both fairness and performance in a range of scenarios. And finally, I'd like to share one case study of how CSIG helped us validate a load balancing change in our production cluster. Before the change, CSIG showed us that a significant fraction of the traffic in the cluster was bottlenecked, and it was bottlenecked on Tor uplinks. When we rolled out a load balancing fix, the data after the change clearly showed us that the fraction of traffic that was bottlenecked reduced by 50%. This helped us validate the change and prove the impact of the changes we were making. Similarly, by studying how the bottlenecks shift across changes, we have been able to use this to validate other changes like topology of scheduling or capacity upgrades to show that it actually makes a tangible difference to how the applications experience the network. And now, to talk about how this technology is being standardized and implemented natively in our hardware, I'd like to hand it over to my colleague Jay. Thank you, Abhiram. My name is Jay uh, Kumar. I'm from Broadcom, and I also chair the CSIG ad hoc in UEC, besides other things. So what I'm going to do is, now that Abhiram has set the base that how CSIG has been extremely useful in the deployments, uh, I would like to give you an idea that how we came to this stage, what we are there today. So we started about two years back. We presented CSIG as a concept uh, at OCP, and that's the time it was being evaluated by UEC. So as Jay earlier talked about, talk in the morning, uh, in UEC, whenever we present a concept for standardization, the bar for acceptance is too high. 
So first thing, the question which was asked to us that, why do you think what problem is solving? So we took the data from Google. We said, you know, there is some data which has been uh, available and been shared. Uh, this is what problem is solving. So I'll give an example. So the congestion control algorithms which UEC was designing, the sender-based or the receiver-based, they were using the base RTT as a delay uh, uh, as a delay measure. Now, RTT gives you aggregate measure of the entire fabric path. Does not tell you where the congestion happened. Okay, so. Compare that to a hop, which is congested, and we give the exact data that where the congestion is experienced and what exactly the congestion is. That's a critical information. So you see, realize, oh, there's a value in that. I think it makes a lot of sense, but you know, no, it's, this is still not enough. So we went through extensive simulation. Uh, there is a tool in UEC. I think it's being made public. Uh, feel free to use it. It's called as HTSIM. So we did a lot of simulation uh, using HTSIM where we actually showed that if you use the telemetry data from the fabric, your performance of the network goes up. The aggregate performance of the application goes up. Uh, tail latencies goes down. Uh, flow completion time reduces, and so on and so forth. So we were blessed to go ahead and take that to the standardization, and that happens two years back. So it took, took us a long time to where we are today. Uh, there are three main uh, areas where we focus in UEC for CSIC. The first is the CSIC specification itself. This is where we define the signals, what signals we want to collect from the fabric. Uh, there are key set of signals. We want to do the quantization. I'm sorry. Uh, thanks. Uh, we want to do the quantization on that, uh, define a common set of quantization algorithms. Uh, as well as some more details. There is the second work, which is the adoption of the CSIG into the congestion control algorithms. Uh, UEC proposes uh, two algorithms which are part of 1.0. They are called as sender-based and receiver-based NSCC or CCC. Uh, both of them have been adopting CSIG signals and they have realized the performance in terms of the completion times is improved by almost 25%. That's a significant uh, improvement. The third track is where we want to be able to provide the standard API interface to be able to program CSIG in the hardware. Uh, this is where we are collaborating with OCP uh, using the OCP networking SI interface. So what UEC does, we come up with the standards, we come up with a proposal, this is what we think should be. We take it to the OCP SI networking community, it's debated, okay? We do look feedback from other people and then agree on that. So that's what we are doing in the standardization process. Besides that, there is an effort going on with IEEE, where IEEE 802.1 committee is extremely in interested in uh, adopting the CSIG as IEEE draft. So that work is going on in the, in the background as well. So having said all of that, if you look carefully, as Abiram was saying, the overhead of the CSIG tag is very, very small. It's like four byte or eight byte. The algorithms which operate on these, they are essentially early operations. You do a min-max operation. The packet edits which we do on them are just compare and update. So operation on a tag is so simple that it's so easy to implement in a hardware. And what Broadcom has done, Broadcom has provided the support for CSIG in the Tomahawk Ultra chips, which are actually positioned for scale up. So effectively what we are saying is that this technology is so lightweight, can easily be applied to latency and wire efficiency sensitive fabrics. Uh, and that's a key point. Uh, besides that, uh, this is also compatible. CSIG is also compatible with the eSUN and the SUT. SUT is the transport work stream which is going on. So with this, I think we are uh, setting up the stage what we are doing. So CSIG has not you know, fully matured. It is still evolving. One of the use cases which came out of it, and that was very interesting, there were operators who said that you have defined these set of signals. What happens if I want to experiment? So we said, okay, this is a very good idea. So we reserved, just like in the IP protocol, you have the reserved protocol. In the, uh, in the ether type code points, you have a reserved code points, which are experimental. We have reserved signal, which is experimental. 
and that can be used by any operator to play in actual deployment. And once they have a data that, okay, this signal is critical and really helps us to improve some use case, then they can bring it to the UEC and we can go through the process of uh, uh, standardization. So that's one thing, keep that in mind, that's always open. Uh, other thing we are working on is the MDF. MDF is the monitoring and debugging framework. That's another use case for CC. CSIC generates so much of telemetry data that can be used for monitoring. Uh, that work is going on. And finally, we have done the contribution of CSIC draft to OCP, and the main idea is to collect feedback from the OCP community. It's part of the OCP networking, so it's easily accessible. It's a 0.5 draft. And very soon, we'll release the actual specification as the UE 1.1, which is the next set of specifications. I think that's all I have for call to action. CSIG is not done. It's working on, it's adopted in actual deployment, and a lot of operators have shown interest in it. A lot of CC algorithms like Swift, RCCC, NSCC, they have already adopted it. So take a look, come join us. Thank you.